The Chinese have a saying. Dangerous men you will meet in narrow streets. And so it was. If there's anyone on the planet who's more badass than Bruce Lee, it would have to be his teacher. <laughs> Ayo, hey, ayo, hey, machete still stainless. The Archbishop run from the Knox. A crisp biscuit plus play the harp. Please listen, goon captain, catch me in Africa. Black down before five Somalians. The portrayal of emotion, the portrayal of right and wrong, the portrayal of the characters, all spoken through the movement of the martial arts. It's so beautiful. In this fight between Gong Er and Ip Man, you can see sparks flying. I mean, it's really as much a dance number as it is an effect of sex scene. Editing, camera, performers, costume, situation, all of these things coming together. It's mastery. Martial arts are more than a form of combat and competition. They're a way of achieving mental and spiritual development. For me, it's a philosophy that's had a profound effect on my life as a mixed martial artist and actress. Hi, I'm Gina Carano. Welcome to the Grand Master, from Ip Man to Bruce Lee. In the next half hour, we'll go behind the scenes of the groundbreaking film, the Grand Master from acclaimed director, Wang Kar Wai. In the long history of Chinese martial art, there were so many great fighters, but only few of them could be called a Grand Master. There were three qualities, being, knowing, and sharing, which means skills, vision, and a generosity to share your skill and experience with the next generation. For people who don't know, Wong Kar Wai wears dark glasses all the time, all the time, all the time. I mean, Wong Kar Wai looks like he's a figure from a John Woo movie. He waits for the double guns to come out. There's also something about him that wants to invest more in characters than in the action. And I think he found in Grand Master that perfect marriage of both. Walter Hill says in his movies, action is character. And for Ip Man, it becomes that after a while as well. For him, those movements say who and what he is. The Grand Master tells the story of one of the most influential martial artists in history, Ip Man. Master Ip Man not only taught his students the physical nature of martial arts, but also the philosophy. The most famous benefactor of his teachings was the great Bruce Lee. Ip Man is who instilled a love for martial arts in my father. He was able to affect him in a way that put him on a path that served him his entire life. Grandmaster Yip Man was highly respected in his time. And because of his student, Bruce Lee, he became a legend. I grew up on the street full of martial arts school. But parents those days never encouraged kids to learn Kung Fu. In the Grandmaster, there's a scene in which there's a kid standing in front of the school of Yip Man. He was fascinated by what he saw. That kid could be Bruce Lee, or it could be me. I had a long time fascination with Ip Man when I was growing up. Ip Man taught the Wing Chun system of martial arts. Hey. Wing Chun is special at uh, close range combat. It's not fancy. There's no fancy moves. Very direct and fast. Extremely fast. It's been said in the Wing Chun clan that fewer than six students were taught by Ip Man. One of those students was Bruce Lee. Of course, he would go on to become the greatest icon in martial arts cinema and in the martial arts. I guess when you think about Bruce Lee, he was 
like a dancer. I mean, Pauline Kael called Bruce Lee the Fred Astaire of martial artists, and she got it squarely on the nose when she said that, because before he started to take martial arts lessons, he was a dancer, and there's something very musical in both Ip Man's style and Bruce Lee's style as well, that sense of dance. You know, I do movie kung fu, and the thing about Bruce Lee was he did real kung fu. You know, I've heard stories like from Enter the Dragon, they're shooting scenes, and then the real kung fu guy goes, your kung fu's no good. And he kept calling him a paper tiger, which meant um, you don't, you're not really a martial artist. You're just faking it. You're not really a martial artist. Oh boy. And he was goading my father and goading him and goading him. And so finally, my father said, um, fine, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> they go in the back, and you know, one guy comes back, and it's Bruce Lee. And after that, no one really says anything, <laughs> you know. Um, he was the real deal. The thing that connects Ip Man, Bruce Lee, and Wong is a kind of grandeur and elegance, a kind of grace that we've forgotten about that can be a part of martial arts. The grandmasters of film about the world of martial arts during a time when China was undergoing great change. It was a time when China was divided into north and south, with most part of the north occupied by the Japanese. It was also a golden time of the Chinese martial art movement, because at that point, many martial artists felt the responsibility to do their part to defend the country. In this chapter, the Grandmaster of the North came to the South for solidarity, and he discovered in man a new hope of the South. The movie also follows the life of another Grandmaster called Gong Er. Gong Er is really torn between her vows to her father, you know, these vows that are tailored somewhat to his expectations and to this philosophy that she has picked up from him. She already is having conflicts with her dad about the chosen character for her husband, which is obviously someone she's not interested in really, but will marry. When she meets Ip Man, that obviously is this great temptation for her. And at the same time, she cannot bring herself to violate that respect. The Grandmaster is also about the strength of love, how it can sustain you and give you meaning. To me, the fight in the brothel is not just a fight. It's also about the mutual attraction between these two persons. <laughs> to show that they are great masters, I want something special. No broken windows or flying furniture. It's about precision. It's a fight taking place in the brothel, which is so completely absurd and romantic. There's physical contact in this movie that basically connotes closeness, that connotes intimacy. The carnality here exists in an old-fashioned movie romance way with a fight that's as much a dance number as it is anything else. When Tony's feet move across the floor, there's that sort of sweep as if he's planning himself for a dance move. It's kind of like watching Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire or Gene Kelly and Sid Charisse. Those dances were in effect sexual. That sequence has a breathlessness to it. It's like, oh, oh my God, you know, it's, it's um, got my hair, look at that, I, just, I got the hair stood up on my arm on that sequence. To create the incredible action sequences featured in The Grandmaster, director Wong Kar Wai called upon a Grandmaster in his own right, the legendary martial arts choreographer, Yuan Wu Ping. His work in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Kill Bill, and The Matrix Trilogy has astounded audiences worldwide. To design the action scenes of this film is kind of nostalgic. In a way, Grandmaster is a tribute to the Hong Kong Kung Fu cinema and Yuan Wu Ping. He's part of this history. Yuan Wu Ping, Wu Ping, bye yeah. I worked with Wu Ping on the Matrix trilogy, and I found him to be very collaborative. It's not just my way, or you know, there's a, a conversation of like, what are we doing? What do you want? This is what I can bring. Master Wu Ping is like 
the Mozart of martial arts film choreography. He's been doing this for over three decades. You want to talk about grandmaster. Wu Ping is the grandmaster of martial arts choreographers. What makes Wu Ping amazing <laughs> is that for me, with his choreography, there's a clarity to it. It's the clarity of an expert. There's a directness to it. There's a power to it. He knows the relationship between the action and the viewer. It's not mussy and fussy and oftentimes not tricky. It's specific. It's clear. He really safeguards what you're doing. So if you need to move your feet or if the punch is late or whatever tweak needs to happen, he's there to give it to you but he doesn't cheerlead. I mean, he doesn't come into your ear and go, okay, now this time, think about something that you hate and throw that punch. You know, he's not doing, what's my motivation? And it's very practical, but coming from a master, you know? I think with the train sequence, he might have hit his Symphony 40 in G minor. I mean, it's so masterful. It's just spellbinding. It was one of those great train scenes that can stand up there with Hitchcock, the wild bunch, uh, runaway train. There's a tension in that sequence that's lovely. You know, the costume, the setup, the environment. I mean, this is what Wong Kar Wai does. He creates a world. He creates worlds and he creates these moments. And there's something that's just, these two forces coming together, the struggle. It's almost like Wong's rosebud scene to me. I mean, it's kind of breathtaking. It's this weird intersection between like the Matrix and Dr. Zhivago. I mean, just to see her in that form-fitting outfit, you can't help but be reminded of Julie Christie and Dr. Zhivago. It's such a collision of, of movie references and images that you just get kind of hypnotized by it. What Wu Ping has done is he's letting us experience real world, uh, authentic martial arts at the most profound level. When Z does coiling dragon, and you see her spiraling and using that spiraling energy, it's really authentic. It's like letting the choreography speak. It's not super cutty. It's like, there it is, they're doing it. I hate to say this kind of thing because I'm not generally prone to using this word to describe movies, but it's a magical sequence. It's just badass. <laughs> to make the ultimate martial arts movie, director Wong Kar Wai dedicated himself to learning everything he could about the greatest grandmasters of all time. His journey began in Hong Kong. From there, he traveled throughout Asia, visiting the world's most respected martial arts schools. <laughs> Casting was also critical. To embody the spirit of a true grandmaster, Tony Lung and Zhang Ji went through years of rigorous training. I'm a big fan of Bruce Lee when I was 10 years old. I know Yip Man because of Bruce Lee. He's not just an action hero or a superstar, but he's a thinker, a philosopher, a man with great passion for life. In the film, I try to portray my ideal Yip Man myself, so I try to blend in Bruce Lee character into the Yip Man character. For a role like this, it's hard for me to just look for an action star. I need a very good actor. We all know Tony is a very good actor. The only problem is he never practiced martial arts. No, never, never. I start learning Kung Fu at the age of 47. <laughs> the reigning scene is the toughest scene in my acting career. I don't remember how many nights, uh, 40 or 50, you know, under the rain. You cannot take off your costume. You have to keep it 
wet all night long and you have to fight dozens of stuntmen and the weather is getting colder every night and the most horrible thing is I never know I have to fight a real fighter at the end. By then, Tony went through almost two years of training. He was ready. But I never told him who was going to be his challenger in this scene. Not until the last minute, when he's on the set, he discovered his Kun Lee. My name is Kung Lee. I'm a former Strike Force middleweight world champion. I'm a former world Sancho or Sanda kickboxing champion, and I fight now for the UFC. It was really scary when you see someone who is double your size <laughs> with with the title of a champion or free fighting. Wow. Tony Lung, his roles are usually different. He's not used to fighting, but he was out there. He's like, kick me harder. He was, he was game. After that scene, when I go back to my hotel, I got bruised all over my hands. shooting. I went straight to hospital and stayed in bed for like five days. I was, oh my god. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Hero, House of Fly and Daggers, Memoirs of a Geisha. Throughout her career, Zhang Zhiyi has proven herself to be not only an accomplished martial arts actress, but a true star in every sense of the word. It's a perfect role for Zhang Zhiyi. She has to look the elegance of the character. She also has a spirit. She's a fighter. Gong Er is the female grandmaster in the film. She is trained in the school of eight diagrams. In traditional martial arts families, the female are not allowed to train. However, Gong Er's father secretly taught her when she was five years old and consequently cast a long shadow in her life. Her father taught her that martial arts was about being, knowing, and doing. She grew up with these principles, being herself, knowing herself, and doing what she knows is right. I believe that there is a gong er inside every woman. Let's face it, she is, regardless of anything else, incredibly beautiful, right? I don't want to limit her to that, but she is. She's got that romance that is the central thread running through the film. She's terrific at these things that are basically gracefulness more than strength. You know, there's a power to beautiful grace and beautiful dance moves. Because I've had some experience making action films and because of my dance training, it usually isn't hard for me to make the action look real. But this time, just to look the part was not good enough. We trained eight hours a day, four hours in the morning and four hours in the evening. Uh, it was very intensive and very disciplined. You're working with talented people and they're transmitting this knowledge to you. It's almost like chiropractic kind of element where you just get popped and then your hips open and you go from hate to falling in love. Sometimes we would be in so much pain that we would call for our mothers and our teacher would say, no use calling your mother, but maybe if you called for my mom, I'd let you go. <laughs> yeah, it'll make you cry, you know. You can have tears coming down, but, but once they pop you and snap you, you're like, oh, thank you. Thank you. In 1997, director Wong Kar Wai became the first Chinese director ever to win the Best Director Award at the Cannes Film Festival. Since then, he's been captivating audiences with his unique visual style and his focus on characters set adrift in a complex world.
One Car Wide creates worlds, worlds that run such a wide spectrum. It runs from this real high aesthetic, formal, epic kind of thing to these moments of just almost verite. There's something swoony about his movies, you know, from Frank Sinatra to Justin Timberlake. There's always this sort of sense of being lost and being slightly off your feet. It's like a painting. Every moment, every scene, every frame is like a painting. Who does that? Wong Kar Wai. Working with him is always a never-ending story. You never know when the movie is going to finish. It's like every scene again, again, and again. <laughs> Until I can handle no more, I always talk to him on set. Uh, I said, Kawai, I cannot shoot anymore. <laughs> I'm going to die. You only get my body, not, not no soul. <laughs> this is what I discovered. You first have to get to know Wang Kawai, and he has to get to know you. When the mutual understanding happens, then the magic begins. My father used to say, everything that he learned about life, he learned through martial arts. And I think that when martial arts are practiced to their highest level, that they are really about that. They're a window into your own soul, and they're about teaching you life lessons. And it seems that in the film, the martial arts are very much portrayed in that way. I just thought The Grand Master was the most mature film he's done. It feels more literally grounded than martial arts movies tend to feel. And I mean that in the best way, that it has a literal and spiritual sense of gravity. I mean, it certainly will satisfy your action appetite, there's no doubt about that. But it's just done in a way that you've never really seen before. There's something about that story. It man could deal with the martial art side of it, internal and external. But the times changed, circumstances changed, and there was something about this character that had a focus and a tragedy to them, but also their strength to carry on. I thought that's what made Grandmaster really beautiful to me. Grandmaster Ipman's dedication to the practice of Wing Chun Kung Fu and his commitment to passing it on to his students can be an inspiration to us all. I know it continues to inspire me. I'm Gina Carano. Thank you for watching.